Welcome back to Core Data Course. My name is Andy. On this lecture, we're going to see how we can version our data model and how to do simple migration. I've created a starter app called Ski and Snowboard School. And as usual, you can download from the lecture resource. This is a simple app that will list out the students that are registered for either ski or snowboard school. And on the first screen, you will see the option for the student that registered for ski or snowboard. And when you click the student, then it will display the student name, age, the type of sport that they choose, the level that they are in right now, and it's identified by the red circle, the parent's contact. And if you test on a real device, you can also make SMS messages and a phone call. And now we're going to make some update on our data model. So let's start with a simple one. We would like to add instructor to the student information. So open the data model file and select editor at the top menu and then select add model version. And I'm going to name this model version Ski School V2 version 2 and it's going to be based on our current model which is the Ski School and click finish. And Xcode will create the second model. So now you notice if you expand the ski school, we will see two data models. And one of them have a green checkbox, meaning that's the current data model that being used by our app. And the data model that we just created is the ski school version two. So as of now, our app still using the old data model. Now click on the student entities and I'm going to open our utilities window and then click on the file inspector and then scroll down and on the model version click the drop down and select the ski school version 2 now if you notice the green checkbox has moved to the ski school version 2 meaning the app will now use the version 2 going forward. And now back to the student entity, I'm going to add a new attribute called instructor. And I'm going to give it a type of string. So now that we have new updated entity, we will need to regenerate our NS manage object subclass. So go to the editor and then select create NS manage object subclass. And then make sure we check the ski school version two and then click next. And then click the student and click next. And in our project, we have a model folder. I'm going to put it there and then click create. So now our student entity it has a new attribute for the instructor. If we try to build and run the app now, it will throw an error since our device simulator is still using the old data model. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to build and run it. And the app crash. If we expand this debug window and I'm going to make some room closing the utilities window we scroll to the top so over here we can see the message error at persistent store with type sqlite configuration and toward the bottom we can also see error adding persistent store so this is because our simulator is no longer compatible with our new data store so in order to solve this issue we will need to enable our simple migration. So let's do that now. So I'm going to minimize our console and stop our simulator. Now back to our file. Under the model, there is a core data that Swift. And on the persistent store coordinator, I'm going to add another option before we add the persistent store. So I'm going to add NS 
infer mapping model automatically options and I'm going to set it to true. So the first option, the NS migrate persistent store automatically option to true, that's basically tells core data. If there is a difference in the data model, go ahead and do the migration. But when we do not set the infer mapping, core data doesn't know what to do to transfer the old data model to the new one. And then now we set this to true, core data will try to map the old data model to the new one. So if we look to our old data model, we have age, level name, parent contact, parent name, and sport. And on the new one, we also have the same thing plus the instructor. So the attributes that exist on the old one is going to be transferred automatically to the new one. And this is the nice feature that Core Data provides us. So now let's build and run the app again. And we should be able to get the same information as before. Now we get the name of the students under the ski and also under the snowboard. And if we click one of the students, we get the same detail as we saw before. And since our student entity now has an instructor attribute, I'm going to make a small update to our table view to display the instructor field. So open the main storyboard. And I'm going to zoom in on the student info scene. And let's move the delete student one row below. And then I'm just going to resolve the auto layout issue. And then select add missing constraint. And then I'm going to click the label on parent contact and just click command D to duplicate and then move it. And same thing with the field, just select the parent name field and then command D and then drag it to the new row. And then I'm going to set the auto layout. just add missing constraint. Then I'm going to rename this to instructor. And then for the field, I'm going to set the auto layout. So press control, click and drag to the content view. And then select trailing space to container margin. The next thing we need to create the outlet for the instructor field. So let's open the assistant editor and make sure the class that being displayed is a student info table view controller. If not, then you can select from the click on the automatic or the manual and you select the file that we want to display student info table view controller. And then from the instructor name field, click control and then click on your mouse and drag to our Swift file. Then I'm going to name this instructor name field. Next, scroll down on the view did load and we're going to uncomment the if statement for the instructor. And then scroll to the done action And we're going to uncomment as well student.instructor. And since we're adding that new row, we need to increase the number of rows that we're going to display to eight. So now let's build and run the app again. And we should see the instructor field in our table view. And it should allow us to update the data. So let's build and run it. Now let's open one of the student info and we get the instructor field. 
So let's give it a name and and for us to remember easily, I'm going to just name it. The first name is Ski Beginner and we're going to give it a last name and just put it something like Logan. And then click save. And then now if we go back, we have that Ski Beginner Logan. So let's do more update. So let's pick the one that green level. So I'm going to give it a name Ski Green Smith and save it. And let's test again. And now we still see the Ski Green Smith, meaning the data has been stored in our core data data store. So that is for a simple migration scenario. On the next lecture, we're going to use mapping model to help on migrating a more complex data model. So until next time.